I am convinced that All this right. guy from the 19th century, if Joseph Smith had messed up or something, would have been the guy to restore the gospel. Really? Now, here's where this gets really, really cool. As Joseph Smith was called Joseph Smith the Mormon prophet, Edgar Casey was called the sleeping prophet of Atlantis. The Book of Mormon technically talks about how there are other records that have not been brought forth yet. There's this like wilderness prophet at the same time there's the actual prophet. Who's the wilderness prophet now? Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet. Yes. Kwaku, go. So, you know how there's always a prophet and there's a prophet in the wilderness? Okay. Jeremiah, prophet. Lehi is a prophet in the wilderness. Rock on. Joe Smith was a prophet, but who was a prophet in the wilderness at this time? I Dwight think we've Yoakum? identified him. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Who? <laughs> Dwight Yoakam. <laughs> I don't know who that who is. is that? It was like this really old, weird looking. Not we. I shouldn't say weird looking. It. Uh, he, he was this like super cowboy country singer in the nineties. I was gonna That's say Orrin so. Porter Rockwell. Yeah. Not really. Not a prophet. Well, not a prophet. Warrior. Been. Warrior Should've priest been. maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Edgar Casey. Okay. And I. I'm still doing a lot of research into Edgar Casey. Just so if I get some information wrong, Edgar Casey stands. Don't come after me too much. Okay. But I am convinced that All this right. guy from the nineteenth century. If Joseph Smith had messed up or something, would have been the guy to restore the gospel. Really? Oh, you think he was the backup plan? I do. Oh. Interesting. Well, not, or, Why? Or alternative plan. And then maybe yeah. in some alternative universe, he is the Joseph Smith there. So here's what I've learned when just studying his life. Because I, and by the way, everyone is like, eh, quick, he's going to leave, become an exmo, he's going to be an atheist, or he's going to become a born again Christian. If I were to, I would become some independent mystic and open my own school of mystery. But, uh, okay. But no, he looks, like, he, I, I hate to say it, but he looks kind of like a little bit of a weakling. He looks like he ate some bugs in the wilderness. <laughs> well, that Casey, makes you strong. Well, okay, for, okay, okay, okay. Do you he, think, do you think he, he would have had the fortitude? He looks tired. He is a genius. His writings are absolutely breathtaking. Okay. Really cool. So first thing, he had a vision when he was young. Okay. He was appeared to by Jesus. Okay. Okay, okay, and he was taught about the Akashic records. Ooh, that sounds cool. What oh, is it? what is so, it? What is it? And this was cool. So the like I, was it I, made I, out of the acacia plant or what? No, well, it comes from the god. Uh, 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 oh gosh, I, I, I can't stand. Don't get mad at me. The god Akash, who mm. uh, who is an ancient uh, Eastern god, <laughs> basically similar to to Thoth. Okay, sorry. Or, or Hermes Trismegistus. <laughs> Often associated with Enoch. Yes, um, and I, I gotta make sure to put my verses here so you guys can see how this interrupts with the gospel. Okay, good because I'm trying to I'm trying to attach all yeah. of these right but here. The Akashic records are very important because okay, it was this idea that all knowledge and everything throughout history, all testimonies of what's happened in history, all knowledge about everything that's happened on this earth, I believe that exists in a, effectively this iCloud, this Google Drive network of consciousness. That we can all access through the right uh, tuning of consciousness and energy, right? Pick me, can you pick me, Mister? Yes, yes, Mister uh, L. Um, what's so interesting is we learned from our boy Nathaniel Givens that the word science was developed in 1830, which ironically, just like Marxism was the false uh, restoration. Science is the word invented in 1830 that is like the false gospel of the modern day. You know, when Neil deGrasse Tyson did his last interview on Joe Rogan, he was venerating the scientific method and why it was so much better than everything before. Even though before the word science existed, it was considered philosophy. And none of the people that made the great technological advancements of the new age were scientists. They were all tinkerers. They were all people that were um, dedicated to God, helping humanity, people that would self proclaim as maybe philosophers or tinkerers, not as scientists. But the word science comes out, right? And he's venerating the scientific method, which is good for finding naturalistic explanations of, th- of things through observable, repetitive experiences. But one of the biggest things he said that made science so much more important than previous dogma was that according to the scientific method, once you've proven something, it alters the way science as a whole thinks about it. 
So scientists literally are trying to replicate what you said is the spiritual concept yes. of what's it called? Akash, or Akashic Records. Akash, okay, yeah. hit it. Now, here's where this gets really, really cool. Is um, he it was starts, already cool. Well, he starts talking it gets about, cooler, about lost lands, lands lost from our documented history. And, 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 and learning from the downfall of these lost lands. For example, as Joe Smith is called Joe Smith, the Mormon prophet, Edgar Casey was called the sleeping prophet of Atlantis. Oh. That was his nickname. Because he started talking about it. He would get these revelations. Wait, but why Atlantis? And why was he sleeping? <laughs> well, first, Atlantis. Okay. How did Atlantis fall? Because they ceased to wear their prosperity with moderation. The pride cycle is obviously prevalent in Plato's description of Atlantis. If we did not have the Book of Mormon, because Joe Smith did something boneheaded, whatever, and we had it was lost, could we not also have another lost history documenting the pride cycle and the rejection of the prophets leading to that land being destroyed through the sleeping prophet of Atlantis? And uh-huh. I think we actually do have, like, the Book of Mormon technically talks about how there are other records that have not been brought forth yet. And well, another, not just the Bible. I mean, not just the Book of Mormon. The Bible references, like, a, a third and a fourth Corinthians, the Book of Jubilees. No, the, I'm, I'm talking beyond, like, missing books from within Scripture. Like, yes. entire different sets of Scripture. Ooh. Never took them forth. Yeah, and so, and and yeah. one thing that I cool maybe you're gonna go here. So tell me if I'm uh, the the function of the Akashic records. Are we gonna get there later, yes, or should yes. I? Okay, cool. Yeah, because uh, I'm about to pull it right now. Sweet, sweet. So first, as I was like, okay, let's think about this Akashic records, okay? okay, and 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 this idea that all consciousness and knowledge is like is like these signals going to this shared collective that we can have access to. Love it. Well, if if that record is, it's the record of reality, which means it's true. Uh huh. Let's open the Doctrine and Covenants, our most esoteric of LDS scriptures, and let's examine more so than the uh, Book of Abraham. Oh, for sure. I mean, the Book of Moses. DNC is way more esoteric. Pearl of Great Price. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Hit it. Doctrine Covenant seventy-seven six, the Q and A with Jesus. What are we to understand by the book of which John saw, which was sealed on the back with seven seals? Answer: We are to understand that it contains revealed will, mysteries, and the works of God, the hidden things of His economy concerning this earth during the 7,000 years of its continuance or its temporal existence. A record of all things. And Moroni 10.5, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you may know the truth of all things. Now, now. Oh, so you may know the truth of all things, the Akashic record. I think that's the power that's, of the Holy that's Ghost. The, that's the most, that, that, that's the extension of it. If you keep pushing, what's the extension? And you may ask, well, no, Quaker, the Holy Ghost is to testify truth. No, the Holy Spirit is to testify truth. The Holy Ghost is often used in record with the truth of the past. So you're S- saying, no, but the Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. Yes, the third member hear me of out, Godhead. hear me and out. You're just saying, you're saying the in f- literature when they say the Holy Ghost, it's referring to the backwards. Scriptural language. Okay. It's the same thing. It's the same force, but the Holy Spirit testifies, but the Holy Ghost is always used... Well, I, I won't say always. It's like when Satan is Commonly called the destroyer used. or the deceiver. When yes. He's called the deceiver when he's pulling the wool over your eyes. He's called the destroyer when he's ruining your life through those lies. Okay, cool. I saw that in Ghostbusters. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> and here's another thing about it that's really interesting. Uh, is now a good time for how it relates to the translation of the Book of Mormon? One last thing. Okay. One last okay. thing. Okay, cool. okay, okay. I'm I want to emphasize this, okay? Okay. The Holy Ghost... A ghost is a spirit of someone from the past. The Holy Spirit of promise is of the future. Same function, same influence of the same being, working in two separate directions. So for the power of the Holy Ghost, you can know the truth of all things. Access to this record, this record of all things that exists within this spiritual consciousness we all have connection to, including the history of lost lands destroyed because of the pride cycle. The Book of Mormon is an Atlantean text. Full stop. All right. This is like Ghostbusters meets Charles Dickens. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know. Oh, 
Oh, this All right, Brad, like Brad, yeah. So, okay, Brad. So something cool there, about You can expand upon this, Brad. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, okay. Something interesting about this entire concept is that it's something that testifies of truth to you, right? Okay. As the Holy Ghost does. It is containing these records. You look at how Joseph Smith translated, right? Yeah. Did, he, did he always have the plates with him? No, sometimes they were on the other side of the curtain. Sometimes they were downstairs. Sometimes they So were, where was he yeah. getting the information from? Just straight. Notice how... From the it, power of God. And this is funny how you, you see this when you listen and look for the meanings behind the words people say. Even uh, Coley the other day said he got a direct shamanic download of oh, something. Oh, yeah, right? that's true. And And so when you look at this and you start like allowing for like hey maybe the holy ghost can like transmit direct light and knowledge to us as okay. we listen i believe that that's part of how the book of mormon was translated okay. and that this way of talking about it with the akashic records is a form of describing some uh, something that works within how god works with us in enabling us through prayer and through the holy ghost to learn additional light and knowledge. Dude, this is cool. So, it's just different languages for talking about that same yeah, thing. Yeah, sometimes I feel like uh, Joe Rogan's assistant, Jamie, when uh, Joe Rogan's got Alex Jones on the channel, he's like, oh, okay, can you look that up, Jamie? Can you look that up? Uh, I just got to make sure it's true so you know everybody didn't cancel me. Um, I just typed in things Edgar Casey prophesied, so on and so forth, and check this out. We got some Edgar Casey stands, Edgar Casey. A-R-E, your body, mind, spirit resource since 1931. So it looks like these people have been around for a while on this. And here's Edgar Casey's seven prophecies that came true. Look at this. The stock market crash of 1929 that he particularly looks like in 25. World War II pole shifts back when everybody said that was pseudoscience, mm. which is hilarious because like we totally know it's true through the archaeo not archaeological, the geographical record inside of the, uh, not the tectonic plates, but the... Uh, Mid-Atlantic uh, Ridge. Yeah, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and all of that. The Mid-what Ridge? Mid-Atlantic. Huh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. The Convergence of Communications Companies, the Life of the Essenes. Oh, interesting. Edgar Casey described the Essenes in detail many years before the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. That's Lehigh territory there. Text attributed to a then little known sect called the Essenes. The first Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947. Two years after Edgar Casey's death, Casey mentioned the Essenes in 171 different readings. Here are a few excerpts. Before we find the eternity was during those periods when there was much turmoil in the land of Judea, when there was announcing of the prophet, of the new teacher, and all Judea had gone out to John. Wow, look at this. There's a whole thing right here. This is crazy. This guy's legit. I'm telling you. He's legit. Oh, he, oh my gosh. I don't know about this one, but it's kind of funny. Look, you know what else this guy uh, happens to do with California that he predicted in California? What? El Nino. <laughs> La Nina and El Nino weather effect. It's why we have like really bad storms once every eight or nine years. There's oh, this type of like, it's like a Gulf Stream that's caused by different like temperature changes that seem to be cyclical that create pressure differences that make it so like the air can hold more water and then all of a sudden it releases a deluge of water. And then you can start looking at, just like you look at tree rings, you can look at different like erosion rings and you realize there's this, um, there's this, uh, this, air system this weather pattern shall we say called el nino and it uh it actually like it causes a lot of storm damage here and then also blood used as a diagnostic tool so he predicted everybody that's taken out my blood for leukemia and testing it seeing if my number counts are good wow okay so this is your boy huh okay so i like him if there's this like wilderness prophet at the same time there's the actual prophet who's the wilderness prophet now oh you're not gonna like my answer to that <laughs> alex jones no <laughs> <laughs> that's where i thought you were gonna go who 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 is it an ascended master that's still on earth Quaku l L. Ron Hubbard's dead, bro. You can't say him. I know. No, it's not L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> uh, well, that, it's difficult to say. I, I can't name who exactly. I have my hunches as to, I would say, inspired people, although they err in certain areas. David, David Icke. Ike. Ah! Ah, I can see that. Ah! Being Wait, who's David he's, a, Ike? he's a researcher, an author, really uh, cool guy. He's like the UK's Alex Jones. 
Uh, he's yeah, know. he's a British guy who has a whole lot of things to say. I um, really he's, he's got some very interesting stuff though. Yeah. I, I can see why you're prefacing it with the uh, like everyone makes mistakes and stuff. Yeah, he's not perfect, but why yeah. did he like pull a Kanye West on it? Uh, he you said know? the apostles are lizard people. Mm. And he oh. and he claimed kind of to be Jesus. <laughs> well, no. But it, it, it wasn't quite that. It was how do you kind of he was saying, to be Jesus? He was saying that he was the son of God, right? Which when you get into it, like we all are children of God. Yeah, he he clarified he, that we're all children of God. He he did make it seem a whole lot like he was the saying he was favorite. Jesus at the time. I I don't think that's what I I don't or think. Or maybe do you think it was the interviewer more than <laughs> Yes, David? I think it was the interview more than David. Okay. Um I, I feel like he maybe could have or he Perhaps was should have corrected David did him say a he was more. appeared to by um, an ancient Chinese man named Wang Yi Li, who taught oh. him like si- secrets about energy and stuff. But this he does like, have some very interesting stuff to say. It's like Big Trouble, Little China. Have you guys seen that movie? No. No. Uh, oh, it's a great film. It's literally daytime, no, you, I guess. You've seen it in 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 GIF in GIF form. <laughs> that big Asian warrior's head that explodes. And pops that they make memes about it. That's from a movie with Kurt Russell made in like the mid mid eighties to early nineties called Big Trouble in Little China, and it's a comedy that's an action comedy that's really funny. Well, anyway, point is Edgar Casey has a lot of really cool stuff, and the more we start looking into this, there was an entire spiritual awakening that happened in the early nineteenth century. The twenties are my favorite decade. You're, I mean, early twentieth century, and you're like, yeah. what is going on? The writings that are coming out of it are groundbreaking, really interesting stuff. We've totally looked over because I don't, I don't know why. No, that's when some people don't realize how much of American pop culture pop culture started in, in that decade, too. Within at least 10 years this way or that way, the Adams Family. Everybody's gushing about Wednesday right mm, now. Yeah. Wednesday is a cartoon from the Adams Family. It's nearly 100 years old now. Dr. Seuss got his start then. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote The Great Gatsby around then. I, I mean, Joe Biden was born then. Joe I mean, Biden. <laughs> Russell and Nelson were born then. Yeah, yeah, actually, you're right. That yeah, is true. Seriously. And, and, and I mean, H.P. Lovecraft. The way it affects our history, Martin Luther King was reading Helena Blavatsky. Wow. Yeah. Mm. MLK Jr. was reading Blavatsky. We okay. don't. We don't connect these things and realize, like, there's a, an unexplored, we need to really examine the, the 20th century and go, what was really going on here? What was wrong with us? We know, I, I know what it was. We got wealthy. We got Pride cycle. wealthy. We are in our Atlantean moment right now. Yeah, and exactly. that 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 whole by the California we, hitting all that water the other day that was a warning. Do you think that we're wearing our prosperity with moderation? No, I don't think so either. I Not mean, our, our royal family are the Kardashians. The, the the literal embodiment of material materialism materialism and pride. Yes, she does some cool stuff for people in prison. But ultimately the message has been to America, you're better if you wear the right thing and you have this kind of status. Or maybe she's just co opting the culture in order to further a brand. I, I don't know. I'm not prepared to throw Kim Kardashian under the bus. I am. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Kanye full <Fulver. laughs> you know, minus the stuff about, you know. <laughs> okay, anything else we got to say before we end? Just check out Edgar Casey's stuff. Really cool. Okay. And, and one one final thing on this. I think okay. it's really cool to see the way that like there's this expansiveness to truth and that we should be searching for truth at all times and in all things and in all places. And the Holy Ghost can help us know what further truth is, no matter what source it's coming from. You can find it if you have the Spirit of God with you to testify of it. Okay. Wait, Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit? The one is, <laughs> one is uh, the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's power. funny. All right, so one last question before we go. This is for you, Brittany. For me? Yeah. Uh, uh, pfft. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm oh gonna say this has been Midnight Mormons. We'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, this is Cardin Ellis. I'm the creator of Midnight Mormons. Thank you so much for watching this video. We know in an attention economy, you could be spending your time elsewhere, but you chose to spend it here with us for that. We are grateful. Before you go to the next video, please make sure that you hit the like 
button. It tells the algorithms that you like our content and it will hopefully recommend more content in the future. Also, if you can subscribe to our channel, it's a great way to be alerted of more content we make. And if you press that bell icon next to the subscribe button, you'll be alerted on every video we make. We put a lot of hard work into these and we want you to see all of our videos, so please subscribe. Also, if you would like to contribute, if you're feeling generous, please consider a contribution to the channel through Venmo. We also have contributions that you can give us through PayPal. There will be links in the description of this video to both of those platforms. If you're a giving person that prefers working through Amazon, we also have an Amazon wish list. Much of the equipment that you see in our studio was purchased through Amazon, and we're grateful if you could uh, contribute that way. Also, somewhere around like here, I'd say, and somewhere around like right here is going to be a recommendation for more of our content that you might like. So please click on another video and we'll see you there. Either way, we're glad to have you here. Thanks for hanging out with us. This is Midnight Strike Through Mormons. We will see you in the next video.